Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Heritage Bible Church. We are delighted you're here. We are celebrating our nation's independence today uh, because uh, Fourth of July, you know, is like it's on Thursday. So <laughs> hard to have a church service on Thursday when we're all we're all programmed to be here on Sunday. But we welcome you as well uh, online, and those of us who are here live in a studio. No, um, we're so glad to have you so much. And uh, we have a video that just kind of sets the stage of where we're going this morning. And read along, it's, there's no uh, audio other than the music, but there's no narrator, that's what I wanted to say. And so it is, uh, it is a video to help and guide us uh, in a prayer for our beloved nation.
prayer, wasn't it, for our nation? Yes. And boy, do we need it now more than ever, right? We want to welcome you again to Heritage Bible. And uh, we have some announcements we want to share with you. Uh, first of all, we want to uh, bring to your attention uh, for Shirley Piet. Um, she had some pains last night in the middle of the night. They took her to the hospital and uh, they're, they're caring for her. And she's just asked for us to pray for her today, which we will in a few moments. Uh, but Shirley Piet, she's always here faithfully setting up every Sunday. Uh, she's been um, a faithful elder. Uh, this is her year to rotate off. And we just want to uphold her in prayer this morning. Also, a couple other announcements. Um, we've got our July birthday, so please take note. They're not until later in the month, but uh, plenty of time to wish people a happy birthday, celebrate their whole month of birthdays, right? You want to welcome there? And then we're also, <coughs> excuse me, we're also asking you to uh, give us feedback on um, small groups, uh, fellowship groups, as we're calling them, and uh, time for you to build relationships not only with God, but also with one another. And uh, we want to create an atmosphere outside of our worship where people can get to know one another just a little bit better, have some fun together, and also learn a little bit more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so those are announcements. We do um, have some other announcements that will be forthcoming. We're, um, we're waiting on an elder thing, right? Yeah soon as that's coming through. It's nothing serious. We just want to report our financials <coughs> and uh, we want to make an announcement to make it official. And we'll do that just as soon as we get some, uh, some other things solidified. And so today uh, we will be reciting the, the Apostles' Creed. So uh, pay attention there, which is next or after our first song. And our first song is a tribute to our nation Song, one of the first patriotic songs I learned as a child in elementary school, America the Beautiful. <clears throat>
love this. Got to love. Whoop. Yes. There we go. Beautiful. Are we there? There we are. We uh, got to love the sister in the background. Did you hear her? Yeah. Uh, it's just something about that, man. That sister starts singing. Just get out of the way. And uh, We don't know what we have. We don't know what we have, yes. do we? Thank you, Ellen. We want to join together at this time to recite the Apostles' Creed, which is in front of you in your bulletin on the left panel, on the inside left panel. It, it'll be up behind the screen behind me as well, and you can recite it there. But you'll notice that down in the second paragraph, it says, we believe in the Holy Catholic Church. That's not the religion, Catholicism. That was used by the, nice, uh, by the uh, creed makers as universal. As you know, Catholic means universal, uh, meaning that all those who claim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So just an editorial note there so that someone doesn't get nervous. So, okay, <laughs> let's begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen and amen. Yeah, that was written about 300 A.D., 325 A.D., and uh, it still holds true today, to this day, of what we believe. And it's essential. They did that historically because there were uh, false doctrines going around denying the um, hypostatic union of Christ, meaning his, whole, his full humanity and his deity. So the, uh, the folks met there, and Constantine was part of that, as well as other early church fathers, and they came up with this creed that, again, we hold to even to today. Well, we sung America the Beautiful, and now we will sing uh, it's what I would call its sister hymn, My Country Tis of Thee. <laughs> Thank you. 
We do have a great nation, don't we? Yes. Yes. God has blessed us indeed. And we are obliged to follow him and, and continue to obey him if these blessings are going to continue. <coughs> and it's through prayer of our founding fathers and past presidents that the leadership always came before the Lord and asked the Lord for his blessing on the nations, on, on this nation. And we do that this morning. Will you join with me? Father heaven, we pray for you, this great nation. Lord, we have been endowed with incredible blessings by your hand. We have been given great freedoms, liberties. And with each and every one of them, there are manifold responsibilities. And lately, Father, we have neglected those responsibilities as a nation. Lord, we have, as a nation, have turned our back on your way. When it comes to those who are unborn, we still have, Lord, a lot to do. Lord, we have a lot to do when it comes to living according to your ways. We have defied your laws as a nation. We have gone against what even nature has deemed appropriate. And so we ask that you would forgive us. As a nation, cleanse us. Cleanse our conscience and most of all, transform our souls as a nation to follow you with all our hearts. Legislation is one thing, but Lord, we need transformation. We need souls that are converted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, who is their creator and savior. And so we pray for that. Lord, we pray for our own here, Shirley Piet specifically, and her well-being that she would be raised up, that the doctors would be able to provide any necessary treatment, and that she could be back home resting. Watch over her and allow her to relax and to experience your peace. We pray for others who are recovering and recovering or whether it's from procedures or Lord, maybe they're ill. We ask that you would touch their bodies to recover and to heal. We pray for your church, the elders who are leading this church, who are under your authority. Give them great insight and wisdom. Give them strength and vitality. Thank you for these wonderful people who love you and, Lord, realize they're called to serve. And they use their position to serve. And we're tremendously, tremendously grateful. For those who are serving and those who have served in the past. Father, our eyes turn to you as we are in election year, year, and the rhetoric has begun way before this date, but now even more so. It is you that we turn to to help us discern between truth and almost truth. It is you that we turn to, to gain wisdom, to think through the issues we will be voting on. Lord, may we vote in a way that is in correspondence to your word, not our emotions. 
Lord, we pray that we would cast the balance that would honor you. Lord, we pray that your light would guide us into the truth today to help us to be responsible citizens of this blessed nation by your hand. We pray in the name of Jesus. And that's why we pray in unity as well, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Well, is it warm in here, or is it just me? It's me. I feel like I'm back in Ohio. I'm feeling a little humidity. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling... You're overdressed. <laughs> but anyways, we'll let it go with that. So if you see the tie get removed or the but top button get unbuttoned, uh, don't panic. Um, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, I remember one year, I can't remember how old I was, maybe five-ish something like that. My mom and dad got the bright idea to, and it was a great idea, by the way, um, to remodel our basement because we had five kids, two adults, in a 1,300 square foot brick bungalow, and the basement uh, was going to be an additional room for the family. And so I remember that, you know, it's pretty hard to nail nails into concrete. And I remember distinctly um, I don't remember all the infrastructure that my dad put up, but he was a jack of all trades. He could make anything and uh, uh, make a car run, even when you, the best mechanic probably gave up on it. And, and he would, when we finished the basement, or when he did, and mom, they put up this panel. Remember the 1970s paneling and homes that was remodeling thing? Especially for uh, basements and recreational rooms, as they call them, the rec room. And instead of using nails, my dad used this, um, this uh, tube, and a, like a caulking gun, and it was called liquid nails. Anybody remember that? That's not liquid nails, right? Yeah. And, and you, you would think, okay, it's, it's not actually nails, but it's, actually, it's an adhesive. And by golly, to the day we sold that house, that adhesive stuck. And when we left, it was still there. And that was over 20 some years that, uh, that it had been up there, maybe close to 30, I'm not sure. But the point is that these liquid nails acted like an adhesive for this paneling up there. When we come to 2 John, which we're still in, these postcard series, I had to tap the brakes this week because all of a sudden, something jumped off the page that I wanted to share with all of us. And that is there are three adhesives in this small little postcard that help us as a church to stay together when the world is falling apart. I mean, I don't need to recite news stories to let you know how our culture is fragmented. You know that. If you watch the news for five minutes, you know that. So how do we stick together when the culture is falling apart? John gives us really three big things. We're going to review the first one today. God gives us the truth. God gives us a culture and God gives us fellowship, the glue, the adhesives to stick together when our culture is just being blown apart. Why do we need this? Because I'm telling you, in a world of instability, in a culture that is fragmented, we need a place that is still, that is quiet. 
and that has some semblance of organization and peace. And most of all, relationships. In our culture, relationship, relationships get fragmented. You heard about the two moms, right? Where their little Jimmy and little Joni were in the, the, the sandbox. And all of a sudden, Jimmy and Joni had a little tiff. Well, instead of being adults, the moms got into a tiff. And they couldn't settle it. So then they went to court over the fact that their two kids started a tiff in a sandbox. I mean, this is where we're at right now. It's ridiculous, to say the least. But today I want to share with us basically just the first adhesive. And we'll be talking about this first one called truth. There it is. When I say truth, the way John defines it in the New Testament, well, let me back up. Let me bring the camera back. When the New Testament talks about truth, it talks about truth in a wide variety of ways. Not different truths, but it identifies truth through different individuals and key things. Let me give you an example. First of all, Jesus Christ is called the truth. In John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? John 17, 17, the word of God is the truth. Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In John, um, in John chapter 14, verse 27, we learn that the Holy Spirit of God is the spirit of truth, right? And then finally, we find in John, John uh, 3, 23, that the gospel, 1 John 3, 23, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is also called the truth. So which is it? Yes. The answer is yes. They are all the truth because they all speak the truth to one another. Wouldn't it be great to have a relationship with God who always speaks the truth? And that's what this is right here before us. Well, not only that, but the, when we come to 2 John, it entails all of that, all of those individuals, plus the word of God. But more specifically, when we come to 2 John, when John talks about truth, he identifies it as the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, but also the person of Christ. And in fact, John goes on to identify truth as displaying reality. Because let's face it, the world is a great magis uh, magician, isn't it? It likes to deceive and delude and pretend what you're seeing is reality, but in actuality, it's not. Do I need to give examples? <laughs> Again, you watch the news. Let me give you one clear example. We were, we were deceived about the COVID virus. We were told it was caused by some bat. When we know now by facts, it was leaked from a laboratory in China. We know that. And yet we were told so many other things. I don't know about you, but that infuriates me. Being lied to purposefully lied to, that infuriates me. I could go on. But the world does not want us to know the truth. It wants to deceive us. And because that happens, not only today, it happened in the first century. Nothing's new since the fall of man. And so John picks it up and says, this is reality. Jesus Christ is real. He is real. He communicates truth to us. So when we come to truth, we want to identify this. We want to explain it more because it is the first adhesive that will keep us together. Without truth, what do you have? Can you have a relationship without truth? Absolutely not. Relationships are based on two giant pillars. Truth and trust 
truth, right? Trust and respect. Truth and re respect. Without either of them, the relationship crumbles. And God gives us the truth right off the bat. And the truth, first of all, gives us our identity. Look at 2 John. My Bible's open to 2 John. We're going to be in verses 1 through 3, if that will work for some reason. It is being obstinate. Don't you love that? There it is. Boy, howdy. We'll be right back. I'm just going to give all three points there here. There I go. They're there. And we're back. Our first point is truth gives us our identity. In first, uh, Second John verse 1, it says the elder. Now, we identified who the elder was when we started going through um, uh, uh, first, I'm sorry, through uh, our last message that the elder refers to to the Apostle John, and he calls himself that because they realize who it is. They don't even have to ask. He just calls himself that. He says, the elder to the chosen lady, we identify who that was. More than likely, it was a woman who housed a church in her home, and um, uh, Demetrius was, not Demetrius, um, there was a pastor in there that was a delegate of John and um, uh, the um, the chosen lady is the place where her house was used as a church. And we talked about that and her children. That meant all the believers who were part of that church. When it comes to truth, it gives us our identity. It helps us understand who we are. We are chosen by God. We didn't choose God. God chose us to be part of his family. You ever, you ever been part of a, uh, on, the, on the playground as a kid, remember, they split up and they have two captains and they would pick teams? And I don't know about you, I don't know if you were the last one to pick or the first one to pick or somewhere in between. I was always somewhere in between. But sometimes, you know, because there were better people around you, you may have been picked last. And that's always a hard feeling because, you know, but you know what? God chose you first. He chose you before the foundation of the world to be on his team, to be in his family. That's part of your identity. You're chosen. You're his child. Notice what it says here. The chosen lady and her children. We're, we're God's children. And God takes care of his kids. He provides for them. He protects them. He loves them. And we're also known as those, look at the last part of verse 1, who know the truth. If you know Christ as your Savior, you are not only elect and chosen, you are not only a child of God, but you know the truth. The truth being Christ and the gospel message. You know it. You believe it. And it's yours. That gives us identity. And because we have an identity, Look at verse 2. It now empowers us. Listen to what it says. It says, not only those who know the truth, um, because of the truth which remains in us and will be with us forever. Because of the truth, in other words, because of the truth that's in us, the Holy Spirit will empower us to recognize what is true and what is almost true. We talked about that last week. What discernment was. And it's the Spirit of God that gives us the grace and the empowerment when we see all the messages of the world. That's true. That's almost true. It's really close. But there's elements there that I don't agree with, that, dis that they disagree with Scripture more importantly. And it's the Spirit of God because... It says right here, the truth which remains in us, it abides in us, it dwells in us. Well, how does the truth dwell in us? Remember what Jesus said in the Upper Room Discourse? I will send you the Holy Spirit, one just like me, and he will guide you into all the truth. Well, not only does he empower us to discern truth, but he also empowers us to live the truth, because it says, and the truth will remain with you forever. Right here, bottom of verse 2. And it will be with us 
forever. So you notice how your identity, when you know who you are, you're freed up to do what God has called you to do. When you're assured of your identity in Christ, you don't have to worry about who you are or what it all means. You've got that down. And that's what John is saying here. When you know the truth, you have the first thing the truth does, it gives us our identity <coughs> in Christ. But the world, see, if you're not part of Christ, you don't even care about this. Really, you don't. And the world doesn't want us to be secure in our identity. The world doesn't want us to have an identity. It wants to impose its identity on us. Why do you think so many young adults are so confused over who they are? Because they've been programmed not to have an identity. They've been programmed to think confusing thoughts about who they are. Is it no wonder that we have the transgender problem that we do? <clears throat> Is it no wonder? Because the world wants to, pre wants to reprogram our kids, our grandkids, to believe that they have no identity. Thus the need for truth. The truth gives us an identity, but it also, secondly, gives us security. Look at verse 3. He says, grace, mercy, and peace. This is John's greeting, all the way down to verse 3. Usually when you read Apostle Paul's letters, the greeting comes right away. John, for some reason, takes a few breaths, <laughs> says a few things, and then he greets. But from my studying, they say, historically, that was pretty normal. Okay, that's an aside. But he says, grace, mercy, and peace. Grace is what God gives to us. We don't deserve it, right? It's a gift. You know the verse, right? We're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. Not of works, lest any man vote. It is the gift of God, the grace. It's by grace we're saved. Grace, mercy, is not giving us what we do deserve. We deserve judgment. We deserve punishment. We deserve separation from God because of our sins have cut off our relationship with God. But thanks be to Jesus Christ who has reconnected us and built a bridge back to Christ. But mercy is what we're given by God that we don't deserve. I'm sorry. Not giving us what we do deserve. I'm sorry. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. And when you put those two things together, the end result is peace. Let me tell you, when your conscience is at peace with God, that's a gift of God. That is grace and mercy coming at you. And that's why it's secure. See, the world doesn't want us to be secure. If you are programmed by the world, guess what the world does? It'll cast fear and uncertainty and doubt in your mind. Right? Again, take a look at what happened during COVID and the fear that they instilled in this culture. What still drives me crazy to this day is how families were not allowed to visit their loved ones taking their last breath. That is inexcusable. Inexcusable. But we were deceived. We were duped. Our nation was cast in fear that this is the big bad wolf coming to get us. And it tried to disrupt our security. How about another example? <laughs> I'm really stepping on toes today. How about global warming? Did you ever notice those proponents of global warming? Rarely. I, I won't say never because there's probably one or two. But there's rarely anyone that will debate a scholar on the other side of the aisle. Rarely. Why is that? Does anybody ever ask why? 
When Al Gore wrote his great book, The Late Great Planet Earth, or whatever it was, he was scheduled to debate a scientist over in one of the Norwegian countries, in that Norway, Sweden area. I forget, his name is Bjorn Jensen or something like that. You can look it up. And at the last minute, as soon as his plane landed in Europe, he canceled the debate. Why? Because Al Gore's book is full of holes. Full of holes. And every, most of the things that he claimed in that book have been, defu uh, have been refuted. But why did they do it? They want you to be afraid. They don't want you to be secure. Why? Why does the world want you to be fearful and not secure and not know your identity? Why? Because then they can, the world can control you. I can manipulate you any way I want to when I've got you afraid and you think the big bad wolf is coming for you. I'll protect you. Just give me your freedoms. I'll protect you. And that's what the world does. That's the reason why the truth of Jesus Christ is so essential. Because it continues to remind us of our identity and security. And thirdly, our unity. Notice what it says. This grace, mercy, and peace that gives us a security will not only be with us, but it's from God the Father and also from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. How does this give us unity? Ready for this? <laughs> I just learned this in the last couple of weeks, studying and preparing for this. It's from God the Father. We have unity because you know what? We belong to the same family with the same father. We have the same dad. How about that? We respect and honor our biological fathers. We love them dearly, but you know what? We have a Father in heaven that we're all united underneath. For those who know Jesus Christ, we have the same Father. That makes us connected. That makes us interrelated. That gives us unity. Also, it's from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of the Father. Guess what? We have the same brother. The book of Hebrews calls him that. We have the same brother. The big brother who can come alongside of us and say, I know you're going through a rough spat right now. Let me help you walk through this. I've been there. I know how to do it. I know how to get through this part of the woods that you're in, the problem you're facing, the trials you're facing. Let me celebrate with what's going on in your world. That's the big brother. He comes alongside of us and lets us know who the father is and explains him to us. And he also helps us through those times. So we have the same father. We have the same big brother that unifies us. And we have the same helper. Although the Holy Spirit's not mentioned here, in truth and love, how do we think we receive that truth and love? It's by the indwelling Spirit of God. So what is the Spirit of God? He is the same advocate for us. He is the same helper. He is the same Thing as Jesus Christ who indwells us. So we have the same father, same big brother, and the same advocate. We have unity just by the Godhead and who they are. Isn't that great? What truth does? Truth frees us in our identity. It frees us in our security, and it gives us unity together. So when we begin these fellowship groups, you can kick off with this outline and say, we have the same identity. We're, we're celebrating the same father. We can throw a party for our dad. How do you throw a surprise party for God? But that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but we can throw a party for him. We can celebrate our big brother and how he's helped us through the week or the month or the year. And we can celebrate the Spirit of God because he puts a song in our hearts. And we're united through that. You know, we're not remodeling anything. The days of remodeling for you and me are probably over. Um, and, and that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> oh, you're remodeling? <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Don't go there. <laughs> I could tell an illustration, but I won't. But why begin with truth? Why discuss our first topic around the subject of truth? Simple. Because truth provides us with our identity. It gives us security. And it reminds us of our unity. Truth does all that. You're not going to get that in the 24-hour news channels. You're not going to get that from the local newspapers. You're not going to get that from anywhere else. You're only going to get it from this, from the truth. And this is what allows us to discern the truth from the almost truth in this day and age when everything around us is trying to attack us and destroy these three points behind me we need this truth now more than ever so we can stick together when the world is falling apart aren't you glad that you belong to this family not just Heritage Bible Church, but to the family of God and to the one who stands and says today, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word, for the truth in Jesus Christ, his message and the person. Lord, I pray that you would solidify these points in our lives to apply them in a way that they, we do not forget them. Lord, remind us of our identity. Settle in our hearts our security and build our unity as a church. We pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Will those helping with communion please come forward? When Jesus was with the 12 disciples, 11 disciples at that time, Judas had left. He said, I'm going to send you another helper just like me. 
the spirit of truth. He also told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Beloved, as we partake of the bread and cup, reaffirm your commitment to the truth. Go ahead and partake of the cup as well. Father God, thank you for the body and blood of Christ. The one who was sent for us to rescue us from our sin, to guide and lead us into the truth, to empower us with the truth, giving us our identity, our security, and Lord, our unity. We owe it all to you all the glory we magnify you in our hearts and our lives now lord in the name of jesus amen amen benediction for today for all of us right the lord god says i will lead you in the truth by my holy spirit trust him to lead you in the truth don't panic don't get fearful this is not the time rest in the truth that he's provided god bless you have a great week thanks for joining us online god bless each and every one of you amen god bless you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.